nice to uh, have you have us here. Wow, that was... <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here first. Yeah, no, thanks for being here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a special night. I mean, we've got an incredible turnout of players. I'm, I'm blown away by the support of the guys. I'm blown away by the support of everyone that's come out to be here. Uh, it's been two years since we were able to do something like this. I think we have a whole new appreciation for uh, how special it is just to simply get together. And that's what Smash Fest has always been about, is bringing people together uh, in a fun but impactful way. That, uh, so we're just, we're just thrilled that it's all coming to, to reality tonight. How has this grown in the, since you started it, Tom? Like it's grown from, I'm sure it's grown immensely, right? Yeah, it started as just kind of a quirky idea to kind of bring the locker room out, you know, to life. You know, we have, every team has a, a table in the locker room and guys love to play and just thought it would be a, a great event and social, it's interactive, whether you're good or bad, it's fun. And uh, it's been very well received and with the support of all the partners we've had and sponsors and players and guests, it's been able to grow the way it has. How does this differ doing it here as opposed to Toronto two years ago? And when you do it in the different areas, you know, reaching out to former teammates, you know, last time at the team was a lot of Maple Leafs, now a lot of Rangers. Yeah, well, thanks for, you've been up to Toronto, and uh, I think, you know, we've been doing it there for so long, and we obviously want to continue to do it there, but we've always wanted to kind of do Smash Fest in more places, because you see the way fans respond to it, they just love being a part of it, and so... I have obviously a lot of affinity for my time in New York and the Ranger fans. Uh, I have a lot of loyalty to the Ranger fans here and so to do it in Ranger country, to have guys like Foxy and Mike Richter and Marty St. Louis and Crides, um, Blackwell who's now not a Ranger anymore, but to be able to do it here in Connecticut with those guys, uh, with the fans that are able to come and be a part of it is really special. Doc, can you talk a little bit about the transition from NBC to to ESPN and what so I actually, I, for you? yeah, so I'm not actually signed by ESPN. Well, you're not. No, you I, I did the draft as just a one off event, uh, okay. which was awesome to be a part of. Um, so we'll see what, what happens, but um, I've really enjoyed the broadcasting uh, my rookie year last year, and especially the playoffs. Being able to call the first two rounds of the North Division was, was awesome. I, I got into kind of a playoff rhythm, just like I was when I, when I was a player, without waking up quite as sore. <laughs> yeah. uh, Marty St. Louis, the odds on favorite tonight? Marty St. Louis is definitely not the odds on favorite tonight. <laughs> He'd like to think he is. Um, I think it's the door's wide open. Uh, I think Trevor Zegris is not letting on how good he is. Uh, we've seen his hands on the ice. It's nasty what he can do with the puck. So I think with a paddle, he'll be equally impressive. Alexander Kerfoot is a really good all-around athlete, so um, I think Marty will be lucky to make the semis. <laughs> Tom, when you look back nine years later since the start, uh, how happy are you with the publicity of the event and how much more work needs to be done? Yeah, so I think, you know, obviously uh, the, the biggest impact we're trying to make is with dollars for research, but I think also the the awareness that's grown out of it in terms of the concussions and rare cancers is, is a big part of it, especially for those two causes which we feel like are underrepresented. Trying to generate some more awareness around those causes is really, really important. Um, and so the way the event has grown, again, through the partnership with the NHLPA and the NHL um, has gotten more involved, uh, it, it's, it's fantastic. So hopefully we can continue to do this. And um, again, we don't take for granted the ability to simply to do this event now, what we've been through the last couple of years. Yeah, it was something you touched on at the outset, just uh, getting the players and fans back together to have fun for a great cause, making the world a difference. Uh, we haven't started yet, but how self America is going to Yeah, I mean, one of the, one of the kind of taglines we had for the event this year is that Smashfest makes fans friends. And it does it because you bring everyone together and players out, out of their equipment, they're doing something fun, you kind of get to see them authentically for who they are, and uh, it's just a different side of the players that you don't normally get to see, and that's what Smash Fest is all about. It's in the off season, uh, players kind of not in the kind of competitive mode that they're in, so I'm really excited to see that play out again tonight. You can put on your panel, Pat, for me. Um, what about the Rangers and the changes they made, coaching, a lot? 
think I think Gallant's experience speaks for itself. I think the where the where the team was at. Uh, I think you know Quinny did a great job developing and get, getting them where they needed to be. There's no doubt he could have continued to build this team into a contender. But I think bringing in uh, Gallant really adds a level of experience. Um, and then obviously they've they've changed the mold of the team. They've added they've added some pieces that are clear in terms of the roles that they defined roles. Um, so I think it was just the results will, will speak for themselves. I don't think it's, you know, as an analyst, you can break it down many, many which way, but the, the results will be the, do the talking. As an analyst also, you mentioned the, the way they structured the team. Do you think in some ways it might have been an overreaction to one game? I certainly think that when something that high profile happens, there, there, there can be a rebound effect and, um, you know, I can't speak to that. I think the the powers that be with the Rangers, Drury and his staff, they, they want to mold the team in a certain identity, and I think they're trying to do that. Again, time will tell. I think it's one thing to, you know, to add toughness, um, but at the end of the day, you're adding toughness for a reason, which is to win hockey games. And so time will tell whether that translates into winning hockey games. And one other question. So you have a Ranger player here, but you also have a Harvard contingent here. Yes. Is that, is that intentional or just through your networking of people? Yeah, it's mostly a reflection of the network. Obviously, uh, Foxy and the Harvard guys I've gotten close with uh, through our, you know, our shared, uh, you know, alma mater. Um, I skated with those guys for months when I was waiting to sign back in uh, 2018, the fall of 2018. So I got to know Foxy really well. Uh, that fall and you know and he was still in college and um, I don't want to say it was no surprise to see the way he's succeeding but for me I you know when people ask me about him I all I could say is I've never seen someone play the game the way Adam Fox does that was then and so I'm really proud because I I love him as a like he's such just such a good person so you're rooting for someone like that and again him being here tonight shows what kind of a character person and generous uh, kind of guy he is, so can't say enough about him as a person and as a player.